get it. Then I went to move a post to this of Tom Hanks mentioning the whole Nippo baby discourse thing, which doesn't seem to stop. It's funny because I feel like this is the one thing a lot of these sort of like uh, Hollywood elite people seem to be really annoyed by and, and really willing to sort of die on the hill to kind of set the record straight. They really want it to be known that, hey, we are not nipper babies. This is what it is really about. Blah, 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 blah. More so than they would with any other topic, right? When it comes to racism, when it comes to even um, the gender pay gap, you know, inequalities or opportunities things, you hear them, they're completely mute. When it comes to um, whitewashing of roles, they're completely mute. But when it comes to the nepotism baby discourse, they want to weigh in and let you know their children are not nipper babies. They're just suffering from success or something, right? It's absolutely maddening. But I thought Tom Hanks' reply to this was really, really funny and interesting. This is courtesy of Men's Health, and it says, Tom Hanks has some things to say about the Nipu baby discourse. Um, it says here, Hollywood actor and mainstay Tom Hanks has been such a consistent, confident president in pop culture over the last 40 years that he has earned a nickname America's Dad. But he's also an actual dad of four. There is actor Colin and actress Elizabeth from Hanks' first marriage to Samantha Lewis, then white boy summer advocate Chet and younger son Truman from his current manager as singer Rita Wilson. All of Hank's children have carved out careers in entertainment. Truman is about to make his acting debut opposite his father in A Mad Called Otto, in which he plays a younger version of Tom Hanks' character. In a recent interview, Hanks addressed the idea that his kids are benefited from Hollywood nepotism. He said the following, look, this is a family business. This is what we've been doing forever. It's all what our kids grew up in. We have four kids. They're all creative. They're all involved in some kind of storytelling or some, some brand of storytelling. And if we were plumbing supply business or if we ran a florist shop down the street, the whole family would be putting in time at some point, even if it was just inventory at the end of the year. The, time, the, the thing that doesn't um, change no matter what happens, no matter what your last name in, is whether it works or not. That's the issue anything anytime any one of us go off and try to tell a fresh story or create something that has a beginning and middle and the end it doesn't matter what our last names are we have to do the work in order to make what a true and authentic experience for our audience and it is much bigger task than worrying about whether somebody's going to be uh, trying to scave us or not now this is funny again because it completely misses the mark like i said previously in another topic or another podcast regarding nepotism debate Generally, I feel like the nepotism debate wasn't necessarily for the elites and for the people who have the nepotism kids to chime in for. It was more so um, an opportunity to provide some respite to people out there who don't, you know, have the privilege of nepotism and also to kind of reaffirm the authority and the control and the gatekeepish vibe of some media platforms because I think they've been running with this way too far. So for the people that are not involved in nepotism and don't have that privilege, it's nice to know that sometimes because somebody's your age mate, but they're way further in their career, it's quite comforting to know that, oh, this person's the child of this person or that person. That's why they're further along in their career because they've been granted opportunities and, you know, privileges that you would probably never get that allow them to kind of show and prove their talent because the talent thing we can, you know, is another thing, but let's, let's generally say you're all, you know, everybody's above medium, medi you know, mediocre level of a talent. If that's the case, then the only thing that's going to be separating people from getting opportunities will be the fact that, you know, whether you get opportunities or not to, to kind of show and prove your talent. So if you if somebody tells you, hey, this person that's your age mate, that's 21 years old, has a hit TV show under their belt because of this, that and the other, it can be quite comforting when you're coming up and you're struggling to get gigs or you're struggling to go to auditions and you've got two jobs and a kid. It can be quite comforting to know, all right, cool, this is why I'm not there right it doesn't excuse the fact that you're not there it doesn't give you a reason to bash that person it's not kind of um yeah like i said it's not an excuse thing it's not a reason to bash but it should be quite comforting so that you know your journey is a bit longer and you know over time eventually hopefully if that's in your destiny you'll get to where you need to get to but it kind of sh should stop the kind of comparison sort of um what about me um woe is me jealousy type of thing it should kind of give you some level of comfort okay cool this is why they're there let me just keep my head down and keep it moving for the media and for the platforms out there who are pushing this discourse way too much i feel like also it's a weird way for them to sort of um re-establish um their authority and their gatekeeper 
um, title so they can say hey look we are the real king makers and king and queen makers in this um, industry we decide who has a career who doesn't have a career because even if you have nepotism we still have to present you the opportunity to present your, your talent yeah so if you're the son of Tom Hanks typically son of Tom Hanks doesn't mean you get roles but it means you can audition for them it means that you can maybe see scripts that other people can't even see loads of other things kind of go into that but they still have to decide to choose you that kind of choosing thing I saw already with this whole Golden Globe stuff you see people crying on the golden globes and sharing these really emotional stories about being out of the industry for so long and about being counted out and now they've got this moment in the sun and you can clearly see that it means a lot to them but a lot of them are kind of and then i could understand why so many actors hang on because they've all got that hope that they're going to have that redemption story that they're going to be with that person on that platform or on that stage sharing the story of like how hard it was and how they just stuck stuck to it they kind of hunker down and they finally need to get what they need to get to that's what everyone's kind of hoping for so clearly for the media elites they want to re-establish their dominance and their authority especially with people on social media these days with the tiktok stars and whatever it may be and people kind of making it their own way and sort of kind of carving their own path they're like no 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 if you really want to be in if you want to be accepted in our industry in hollywood we decide who are the king and queen makers going forward but i honestly do think for the people who are debating it people like tom hanks and stuff they miss the point or the mark because it's just not their reality in it and you can kind of understand it but they just don't understand that coming up without any access to these opportunities and what it may look like for somebody is just completely different and people who have don't have the opportunity or the privileges should be annoyed by it it doesn't excuse the fact that they don't have the opportunities it doesn't excuse the fact that they're not where they need to get to in their, in, in their industry but you know being a little bit aggrieved that you don't have the same privileges that chet hanks does or the same chances to mess up or to basically get an excuse from your obvious lack of talent or just kind of existing it can be a little bit annoying but i'm also sure being a chet hanks can also be its own version of hell where you're essentially living under the shadow of somebody like a tom hanks being your dad which is absolutely crazy because how are you ever going to surpass or meet whatever achievement he has met in his life everything that you do is going to be compared to him and um, you want to carve your own name but people won't let you kind of not forget your last name and you also get presented with opportunities and chances you never asked for just because of the name that your dad has but also he had to work for it you know so there's that weird kind of vibe because he obviously worked for it to provide for his children and of course any person out there if you have kids you know the, the last thing you'd want to do is for them to suffer the same way you did even if you want to, you know to be street smart you don't want them to grow up in the same you know poverty or the same points of desperation or the same struggles that you had if you can afford not to why would you do that of course you wouldn't so it makes complete sense why you're giving opportunities but the idea that these people are going to be you know would be where they are regardless because of hard work is just insane because we know that isn't the facts but you also know your name doesn't always count for everything just because you have a name doesn't mean you're going to go anywhere in life it could be like i said it could be some kind of prison but this lack of understanding what it's like to be like a regular person out there can make some level of sense because they're quite detached and they're quite airy fairy up in the air and i actually do like this to be honest i've got to be honest i like this approach because from tom hanks what you see is somebody who's not really that kind of you know plugged into what the regular person's going through they're a bit detached um they don't really know the plight of the regular schmegular person out there which is okay because you're fucking tom hanks you shouldn't know what regular people are going through but i feel like before the longest time these people try to pretend like they knew what the average person was going through and they try to emote to it they try to relate to it they try to kind of you know larp as they were kind of regular folks too when you're not you've grown up in a lack of privilege you have people kind of lapping and doting over you from the beginning of time you know, people surrounding you that are yes men you've, ba you've basically been able to play adult pretender for the majority of your life and all these type of things it's no wonder that you're a bit head in the clouds that makes complete sense but for the people out there struggling and trying to make it forward in life it's good to know that these people Nepo babies in particular do get opportunities based on their last name and that some of them aren't there's going to be on the same level that you are just based off that and they get presented opportunities that you would never do but it also is an excuse for you not to work hard you still need to show up and prove and present yourself and in this life that we live in nothing is fair just because you know even the, the, the idea of an even playing field is never ever going to exist so you always have to overcome and battle your own things to kind of get where you need to get to and in general to me personally i feel like the, that journey even if you don't make yeah, this is a thing that people don't like to talk about but i feel like that journey is worth this weight in gold because i'm a big stickler for having good fun interesting bar stories to tell and what what is a better bar story than trying to make it in an industry that's 
intrinsically hard to make it in that doesn't have any direct root that's full of abuse um manipulation um greed assault all these sort of nonsense things all these sort of landmines you have to you know dodge in any kind of way identity politics politics in general um self-confidence issues mental health and you finally get to the ending point where you achieve something where you get paid for something where you get on a tv show where you maybe get something submitted to tribeca whatever it may be that journey should be worth it in itself even if it doesn't end up being a big, a big, big success, the fact that you did it should be enough in itself because I can't imagine how hellish it must be trying to um, match or surpass what Tom Hanks did, knowing full well you're never going to do it. And knowing full well, even if you did do it, everyone was, would attribute your success to your dad. That must be must play crazy games on your head. So there are kind of, you know, there are pros and cons to both sides of the argument. But I do like the fact that Tom Hanks is unaware and doesn't really have a grip on reality because he's fucking tom hanks but this nepotism baby discourse is getting a bit boring i'm not going to lie